Charlie is 29 and she is based in the UK and Wales. Dad was diagnosed with Huntington's disease just two days before she gave birth to her first child in 2019. Coming to terms with the new disease that they didn't hear anything about before was definitely devastating and heartbreaking. She first thought of the impact on her dad and then her son before recently thinking about the impact it would be on herself. She set up a website and social media platforms after re researching more about HD. You, Me, and HD talks about her own experience, but also is mainly there for anyone who finds themselves in the position that Charlie is in. She's found it difficult to think about her next steps regarding testing and also having more children. And finally, she's finding some positives in family in her family's diagnosis. Every day, she's engaging with the HD community around the world, speaking to everyone about her story to make sure that they are not alone. She wants to be more supportive and to be an advocate to others. So these conversations don't just start at or stop at what is HD. She wants to just understand the three main elements and help others understand the elements that make up Huntington's disease, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and motor neuron disease. So Charlie, we are so excited to hear more about you and your journey. Thank you so much for having me. So yeah, like Rachel said, my name's Charlie I'm from the UK. So today I'm talking about my genetic journey. So a little bit more about me really. So like Rachel said, it's a few days before I gave birth to my son Kian. My dad tested gene positive Huntington's disease. I had no idea that he had tested negative, tested positive until months down the line. Previously as a family, we had no idea what HD was. If it wasn't for literally a HD specialist sitting in on my nan's doctor's appointment, we still wouldn't know to this day. Whereas compared to some families, they've known generations upon generations in advance. So for those that are familiar with my journey, they will know that I decided to set up UMI and HD. And that was purely for wanting to try and find out more about Huntington's disease and also my own options for testing. At that point, all I wanted was to have control of my future and my son's future and to not be continuously clouding being a first time mum and dreading that the impact that could be happen could happen to us. And I was continuously symptom searching during every single interaction with my son. And I just knew that I couldn't carry on like that. Something needed to change because I was just losing precious time and I was never ever in the moment I was looking at him doing his first milestones and thinking that means this that means that but I don't know because I don't know if I'm going to find out or not so after reaching out to the community I decided that I wanted to be a part of this opportunity to have my genetic testing journey actually filmed from start to finish so in the UK we've got BBC and they did a massive documentary about DNA and different inherited diseases and things like that. And they wanted to focus on someone who was involved in Huntington's disease, but hadn't previously been tested. So I put myself forward in hopes that due to my own frustration and the lack of understanding of the extent of genetic testing through people that I was talking to. I just wanted to put myself out there and raise awareness and educate others about the roller coaster of genetic testing. So, like I said, they filmed us literally from start to finish. And as soon as I got involved in it, I they sat me down various times throughout it and they said, Look, when you decide you want to be you want to know, you don't have to decide that. It's totally down to you. And I was like, No, I want to know. And the second question was, do you want us to still film it if you're positive? And I said, yes, because people need to see the reality of it. It's not just you're given a sheet of paper and then you're expected to get on with your lives. There's more to it. And for me, I was still going to work and try to explain to people that I never heard about Huntington's disease for what I actually was going through. And to be honest with you, it was just going over their heads. Oh, it's just some sort of dementia. It's just some sort of, oh, that won't affect her that e easily or that young. And I went through every single step of that process being filmed, each consultation with my boyfriend, Rob, and our little boy. And in November 2020, I found out that I had tested negative for Huntington's disease. And in that moment you feel that instant relief you feel that physical I can remember feeling that physical weight come off my shoulders and I never ever felt anything more heavier in my life until it come off but 
like I say to so many, it is only brief. And for some families, that result is the end of their HT journey. It's the book is closed. It's put to one side. We don't have to worry about it anymore. But I think many people forget that for one family member, that genetic chapter is closed. But the lasting effects of that experience still plays a huge part in everyday life. It's nearly been two years on. And in terms of dealing with HD now, I temporarily take a step back, but I'm just e eagerly in a way that you just want to know so you can help others. I'm waiting for the decisions of my siblings, whether or not they want to be tested or they want to just wait and see. I'm waiting anxiously to see if my dad will ever start presenting symptoms. And it's watching your family continuously readjust to a faulty gene. And it happens time and time again. And you're thinking these implications still carry on. I watch my nan now, thankfully slowly, but never more sadly deteriorate and change. And I constantly live with that survivor's guilt. And I can remember the first thing my dad told me after I revealed that I had tested negative was be happy and start living life without worries. And I think many people, until you go through it, and um, because those months and months you've been putting yourself in those situations where you go, what happens if I have got it? What will my future look like? What will Kian's future look like? What will, will he end up caring for me before I care for him? What, and I think the weirdest thing about finding out about HD and being affected by it is that you think it is the worst thing that will ever happen to you. And don't get me wrong for many people it is in that moment it is they've known for generation upon generations they've seen loved ones lose each time to this disease and it's just another thing on top of another but for me it clouded my whole view of life being just directly by Huntington but the directed directly impacted by just Huntington's disease and nothing else and the sad reality is unless you are invincible, life will still carry on testing you. And for me, I've had moments where you feel like you're getting better and it feels like it's, it destroys you again. And it leaves you questioning, what's the point? And I think for me this year, I'm very open about my story and me moving forward. And a lot of people will know that I was literally on the up. Like I had these two years and I was like, I'm going on the up, I'm on the up. And I'm feeling more like me again. I'm feeling more optimistic about things. I'm not scared that something might happen. I finally just let go of everything. And this year alone, in the last six months, I've suffered a miscarriage. I've had to deal with quite recently the shock passing of my granddad. And it's been a very raw and testing time following a brief period of picking myself up from this ordeal and the last two years. And I still get people asking me now, you were so brave to decide to get tested. Life's good now. You're negative. What, could I be that brave? Could I know? And I think for me, being brave lies in the choices you make every single day. Whether or not you decide to go through DNA testing or choose to live in hope, decide to have children, decide not to have children or adopt, for me, I think moving on with Huntington's disease, whether you're negative or positive, it's even as simple as the choices of deciding to get out of bed in the morning. That can be the hardest thing for anybody. And it is that first action in the morning. And I know that this talk seems very doom and gloom, but it's far from it. And the reason I set up Yumi and HD was to seek support, to find the much needed light in this dark unknown. And starting this page, I just wanted to see the pain ending and to look for a way out. And at one point I was suicidal. I considered running away. I just started closing myself off from the world. And like I said, I at one point in my life, I literally felt that I was the worst man in the whole wide world because I just could not give myself 100% to my little boy because every time I looked at him, I was feeling more and more in love with him and I just couldn't fall more in love with him if I tried because I knew he was breaking my heart every single time. But making that choice to be tested and going through that experience I have found a place of community and it goes to that talk that you had this morning is that corner of the internet that you find the happiness and positives in life struggles 
And HD, despite its unknowns and individual differences, it connects people and it builds like a lasting friendships through common tragedies and trauma. And I'm pretty sure it was Laura who said about it, but you suddenly are thrown into this army of mighty and empowering people who don't stand down when the waves get rough. They just, we just carry on. And whether it's at a slower pace than most, whether the time is short or more importantly, it's no matter what, we're still together. And today, I, like I said, I've spoken about my story previously and I felt today I was asked to discuss my journey, my results and what the future holds for me now. And I think the key message for me to just say to people today is all because you test negative doesn't mean it's over. For many families going through this, this is only the beginning of the dominoes either falling or staying up. And you still have your bad days and you still have your moments of pure anger over wasting time and for me not being the best that I can be and you punish yourself over literally the smallest things and I always say that HD destroyed my safety net and how I'm always trying to fix it even now so trying to be the person that I innocently was before it entered my life and I think I'm coming to that phase now where I know that it that is impossible, but looking at that in a positive way. I'm here today talking to many amazing people that are affected by HD and that's an opportunity I wouldn't have got if it wasn't for a faulty gene. And I've made amazing friendships. I've become an ambassador, I've become an ambassador for many HD charities and been part of amazing panels to discuss my story and to give support to others. And recently, what was really lovely is I was involved in the UK in sharing my story, but as a part of a campaign to address the mental health side of things and, and how that impacts on families, whether you're positive or negative. And I know for many people that get the chance to speak, it's really hard if they are negative. We have this fear of judgment and being told we're being, we're the lucky ones we shouldn't be complaining but our voices still matter and we play a huge part in supporting those in the HD community and our loved ones and I just want people to know that I don't want them to ever think that because you tested negative you no longer have the right to talk about your experience or access support because you didn't test positive your health emotionally mentally and physically is just as important as somebody going through those going through their positive journey you're still there having to possibly become a carer and be there for them knowing you're dealing with your own emotions of survivor's guilt and other things on top that life just brings and for me my hasty journey might be over but sharing my story and helping others definitely isn't so that's what I just wanted to say today and just give people the opportunity that if they had questions or whatever that they can shoot away and just thank you for Katrina for giving me this amazing opportunity and like I said if anybody ever wants to connect like I got my socials just drop me a message it's about being together and supporting each other we might be rare but god we do not go we do not go down without fight so yeah you are amazing, Charlie. And now I'm putting a face to a name. I follow you on Facebook. I just added you on Instagram for you, me and HD. And like you made the comment that this talk might seem doom and gloom, but I think it was the opposite. I think you have a really good positive way. And you said the HD community is an army of mighty and empowering. And that is absolutely right. And we all might wonder why HD has to affect our families, but this is why our community is why, and we have this opportunity to share our positives, the negatives, and how we each get through the day. It was wonderful talking to you. You are so Thank wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Charlie, we, there's a lot of people watching online that were live streamed on Facebook right now. And so, there, and for everyone who has spoken already for this day and also moving forward, there's a lot of comments on Facebook. So if you guys want to touch in and touch base with people, please go check out that feed because we can't like keep up with everyone and read them all on online. But what I did want to say is I am feeling every word of Charlie's story. And then another is preach, Charlie. God bless you. <laughs> so everyone's <laughs> constantly you. listening. And I'm, I can so relate to what you're saying. And 
you validating my feelings feels amazing because I also test a neg- negative and I help my family as much as I can and the community as much as I can. And that's my coping mechanism with testing negatives. Thank you for being here today. We really, really appreciate and value what you bring to this community. Thank you ever so much. It's been, it's just been a blast. Yeah, it's been worth it. So thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much.